Hey cats, it's Ed Fox Mulder Bud here, back with another episode of the famous Shoe Files, asking the question today as to why Nike's recent outsole rubber is so terrible. Are they deliberately reducing the durability and the lifespan of the shoes? Remember, the truth is out there. Welcome back to the channel people and thanks for stopping by. Before we open the case file today in the shoe files, remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll out the new videos for you. Hit that like button and share this video with your running buddies. Merci beaucoup. Today on the shoe files, looking as to why Nike's recent outsole rubber is just so poor. I'm experiencing loads of early wear on certain Nike shoes. When I say certain Nike shoes, most of them really. Are they deliberately reducing the durability and the lifespan of some of these models? In my experience in running in several different road shoes and trail shoes recently, I am seeing a lot of early wear, even after a few miles. Those rubber formulas used, the RSO 1, 2 and 3, all seem to suffer from the same problem. I'm not saying that the lugs are completely wearing off and you're just left with like a flat surface, but it's the actual pattern on the lugs that seems to disappear. And it gets sort of sheared off and flattened down and you're just left with a load of very smooth lugs. Now that's great if you're running on some dirt trails, on some gravel perhaps, but traction on any smooth surfaces, especially if they're wet, is pretty terrible. If you're going over some wet wooden planks, for example, which I do run on quite frequently, or some stone slabs, you better make sure you've got your insurance in order. In icy conditions, I found the Pegasus Trail 3 lethal with zero grip at all. That's just after a handful of miles as well. It's not like I'm grinding these things into the ground. I quite often use those trail shoes for some casual use, some commuting, and they just really don't hit the spot. It does seem like they're dialing in those shoes for a very specific trail use, rather than some of the stuff that I need here in the countryside. Certainly in the autumn and winter months, it gets pretty wet and I'm running on sort of paths or concrete and those outsoles just do not do the job. Certainly on the recent Pegasus 39, I've seen very early wear and you can tell what that wear is because they've used some sort of recycled rubber. You can see some of these white speckly sections appearing in the rubber as you've worn certain parts down. Whereas a little bit improved in something like the Invincible run, though there's such a huge amount of rubber here, I think that kind of saves the shoe a little bit. The thing I find very confusing with some of those Nike trail shoes is that they advertise them with Gore-Tex and all these special waterproof solutions that have been added. It does suggest they're ideal for sort of wet weather use, but that isn't the case. I mean, if you're doing standard day-to-day -day hikes, you might be okay. But what is it with this lack of development in terms of Nike's trail shoes? I can't imagine that Nike are particularly large in the trail running market. There's lots of other brands with some real longevity and heritage in terms of that use. Nike always seems to have been a road or track running brand. I think that's slowly drifting away. Maybe run-of-the-mill offerings just sell more. Lots of cushion, like a really comfortable plush upper, special words written on the side of the shoe. Maybe that stuff just sells. I was just at the garage and the guy that went in in front of me had some Air Monarchs on. They weren't laced either. You just sort of chuck the laces inside, they look battered. The classic dad shoe, ideal for everyday cruising with its almost full length air and premium leather. Of course, all of those things have been disproved by the recent Rose Anvil video on the Air Monarch. Do go and check that out, it's brilliant. I've got to imagine Nike sell more like Dunk Low Pandas and Jordan 1s, maybe like Air Max 90s or 97s, certainly in this country anyway, or Vapor Maxes than they do any running shoes. It's got to be quite a small niche thing really, Vapor Maxes, things like that. It's that's the big seller. You don't see people wandering around with Pegasus on their feet. Is it simply just a low priority as part of their lineup now? Our trail shoes just sort of reduced to this. Well, we better put something out, you know, so the other brands aren't completely running away with it. No pun intended. Maybe a lot of people, if they're just sort of getting into running or they just do a little bit of running, just grab a Pegasus off the shelf of the Sports Direct and go with that. Perhaps it's only the serious footwear enthusiasts like me that are really that bothered with the likes of the Invincible Run or the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. The forthcoming ZoomX Ultrafly 
not the Zoom Ultrafly tennis shoe. It's said to use a new rubber formula though. Now, I've heard all this before, whether it's any different, I don't know. I'd love to think that it's actually completely different to the others. It's gonna be extremely durable. Considering this seems to be more of a race orientated shoe, I can't see them putting a more durable rubber onto that than some of the others. I mean, like the Zagama, for instance, why would they put a lighter, less durable foam onto that? That doesn't make any sense. It seems like an unnerfed sort of trail model that's gonna be more expensive than the Zagama, and I can't see it being more durable. That would be weird. Now, that might be a great shoe, but I think my eyes and my mind has been expanded and opened, perhaps, by recent events. I think you pronounce it N Normal, which is the shoe brand from Killian Jornet. Sorry if I've pronounced that incorrectly, but I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, right? Viewer Paul Chapman mentioned to me via email that some of the commentators on the UTMB had mentioned that he'd be wearing the same pair of shoes as he'd worn in the last three races. So the last three races he'd done, he'd worn exactly the same pair of shoes. We're talking serious miles here. So if that shoe's good enough for him to do that, well, it kind of makes you wonder why some of these other models are wearing down so quickly. I mean, this guy's gonna know his shoes, right? He's gonna know what's gonna work for that specific terrain that he's gotta traverse. I did look around to try and confirm some of this i did find a little bit of information just reading it back from my notes here he did confirm that he intended to wear the same pair of shoes throughout all of those races across that period that was his hope at least and he seemed to have some belief that that could be possible i can remember people saying they were saving back vaporfly next percents you know to run specific races like months in advance i always thought that's kind of strange i can understand it to a certain degree but i think a shoe if you're going to use it for a marathon for example you need to know that's going to work over a considerable distance i'm not sure i'd want to go with a brand new shoe out of the box for a race like that but very interesting that this shoe has seemed to do the business over uh, four races maybe it even got better and better <laughs> Just reading back as well from the notes and some of the information I found to back this up. He does mention wanting to have a shoe that can be used for all eventualities. So rather than having like five different trail shoes for various different activities, he wanted to design one that just did it all. 100 mile events, different terrains, scrambles, climbs, a true Swiss army shoe, I guess you could say. So any surprise that sort of pops out during a race and the shoe will just knock it down. Another interesting point he does make is that do you need like five pairs of shoes? You know, technically they're all quite similar, aren't they? Just very small changes here and there. We're talking slight differences here. Most people aren't really gonna notice them at all. I think we might if we're heavily invested in shoes and footwear, but a lot of people, they're not really gonna know. I think compromise is the thing here, trying to make a very, very good shoe that can be used for lots of things, or rather have loads of different models they're gonna confuse people, and then you're probably not gonna sell that many if you've got that many different models. It's probably a bit more environmentally friendly as well, isn't it? I wanna work my way back to outsoles a little bit here. Nike can afford to put out shoes, you know, 10 to the dozen. If they get some returns, they're not really that fussed. They're making money hand over fist on other lines. They can afford to gamble a little bit on certain models that might work or might not, but they got some cash cows there, haven't they? Things like the Pegasus, the Jordans, Air Max 97s, things like that. If you look at it from like bands that are on labels, you know, certain cash cows, aren't they, that just keep on making money. Bands like Oasis, for example. Elvis is probably still coining it in, in terms of the actual estate. I'd imagine BTS aren't short of a few quid either. I would imagine Nike's running lineup is probably held up by the Pegasus, really. That's their famous running shoe. Yeah, you've got your vapor flies and things that have been around for a few years. Average everyday people probably aren't going to bother with the vapor fly. You're just running a couple of times a week. It's no point, is there? You're going to want something that's a little bit more durable that you can put on your feet and they're going to last you for a few months. So Nike can afford to misfire a little bit. There's so many models there and they've got so much cash coming in from other areas. I think it eases the blow a little bit if one of their running shoes doesn't quite work out. So shoes clearly can last a little bit longer than they did in terms of the midsoles. Some of those older EVA formulas got quite firm over time and I don't think they were particularly great in terms of their longevity. These days though, 
we have stuff like React, we've got Zoom X, Fuel Cell, Lightstrike Pro just seems to get better the more you use it. Now we know that the midsoles can actually outlast the outsoles a little bit. Bit of a switch there, but obviously the problem lies in the fact that if you've got a shoe that lasts for ages in terms of the midsole, nobody's going to buy a new one. They're not going to keep replacing it all the time. If you're trying to make money out of selling running shoes, that's probably not what you want to hear. So you've got to find some way of actually nerfing the shoe a little bit to make it wear out. I think it's going that way a little bit with a few brands, not just Nike. What's your view on this, guys? Do you think that brands are actually deliberately nerfing the outsoles a little bit? Rubber formulas that aren't quite as durable as they used to be? Gotta be honest, Asics is one brand that I don't think are doing that. Some of the outsole rubber they have is ridiculously durable. It never, ever seems to wear down. People seem to blast through certain makes and models though very, very quickly. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. Today comes from Neil Young and the MTV Unplugged version of Long May You Run. Now, I love this song on all sorts of different levels. The actual playing, the harmonica sound, and the general vibe of the MTV Unplugged performance are really, really good. He could have played anything that night, I think. Maybe even a rendition of Postman Pat and it still would have sounded good. Long May You Run is a fantastic song, I believe written about his car. I think he had a hearse at one point where you could actually load the amplifiers and stuff for the band onto the uh, wheels, you know, the bit that brings in the coffin. Apparently he said it was really, really brilliant, you know, it's saved a lot of effort trying to load in all the gear. And the song's a bit of a love letter to that car and how fantastic it was, and all the miles that they drove over and gigs that they did. He's sort of thinking about where the car could be now. Maybe the Beach Boys have got it or something. It's a wonderful song, quite sentimental, just a song that makes you smile, you know? It just got me thinking about durability of outsoles, you know, long may you run. See what I did there? Go and check it out, guys. Long may you run from the MTV Unplugged performance by Neil Young. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video. It is always appreciated. If you have yet to do so, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.